Hello, this is Paul Check. Welcome back to my Movement as Medicine series. This is part five, working in and pumping. My resource for you today, if you want to learn more about this, is my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy. If you go to chapter six, Energizing Exercises, I teach you a variety of zone exercises based on the chakra system. So once you fill out the questionnaire, Wherever your scores are high, it gives you key zone exercises, which are pumping exercises done at work in intensities so that you can balance yourself. Also, I will be discussing how the brain functions here on, in the stress chapter, chapter 11, and I'll share some of that with you here today. But as you can imagine, there's a lot more detail in the book than I can give in a little short uh, presentation like this. So once again, loads of useful, highly practical information in this book that's designed to give you the basics you need to keep yourself healthy in body and mind. With that said, let's see what I have in store for you today. Well, first of all, working in is all about pumping. And we'll talk more about pumping in a minute. But pumping means pressure fluctuations, which cause fluids to move in the body. Pumping should also be thought of as ideally coupled with what I call torso deformation. For example, doing a biceps curl is pumping, but there's no deformation of the torso. If you don't deform the torso by doing things like laying over Swiss balls, bending your body, extending your body, twisting your body, then your organs don't get effectively pumped. So for example, imagine people that exercise on machines in gyms. They move their arms and legs, but their core is fixed and doesn't pump. So it's kind of an ineffective way to use exercise to keep the body healthy. It actually creates imbalances in the body. Work and exercises are for cultivating life force energy. Chi is a sort of a name that encapsulate, encapsulates all life force energies that interact with living organisms. So life force energy is subtle energy. Uh, the sun is a form of life force energy. Food is a form of life force energy. Water is a form of life force energy. Breathing is life force energy. So anytime we're not getting adequate life force energy through our food and through our environment, then we can have a deficit of energy and what we need to do is utilize techniques like I'm sharing here to bring our vitality up, such as if you're traveling in airports, if you just sit around and don't pump, then your body gets stagnant and you're much more likely to gain an illness from being around all those unhealthy people in airports. So it's very normal for me to do Tai Chi on airplanes and in airports and it's a great way to keep yourself healthy. I've managed to go my entire professional career now for over 30 years without missing a single day of work using these techniques. Okay? Pumping and working in also enhances your ability to feel and experience yourself. As opposed to working out where your attention's outwardly directed, you're moving the weight, you're running hard, you're lifting hard, working in is designed to bring your conscious self-awareness inside yourself so you enhance your relationship with and your awareness of yourself so that you have a more healthy, intimate relationship with yourself, which is extremely important today in a world where many people skip meals because they don't even realize they're hungry, forget to go to the toilet, get so busy on computers that they suppress their urge for urination, they don't know what foods make them feel good or not. They're so addicted to sugar. So all of these things are indicators that the ego is separating itself from its body, which leads to tremendous health problems. Tai Chi, Qigong, zone exercises, all these work in exercises, they balance your yang fire and help you increase your water energy. Most people today are too hot, too wound up, eating foods that inflame the gut, overstimulating themselves all the time. So they're yang, 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 yang. Well, you can only put so much fire in a pot before you burn the pot, so to speak. 
So these exercises bring us back in touch with the water element, which most people today need very bad. So those are some basics on why we work in. Let me talk a little bit about pumping now and how it relates to the functions of the body. Here you can see I've redrawn the diagram out of my book, Eat, Move, and Be Healthy from the Stress chapter, where we look at Paul McLean's model of the brain called man's triune mind, man's three brains. The reptilian brain has been shown by science to be the re remnants of the reptile kingdom within us. So we have the same basic structure. A reptile has basically only got that for their entire brain. The mammal has a much more expanded brain, and then the human being has a neocortex on top of that, which expands our functional capacities, our psychological capabilities, our thinking abilities significantly beyond the animal kingdom. So when we're looking at the functions of each of these sections of the nervous system, we can then see how working in is supportive of each of these functions. So the reptilian brain deals with what's called the four F's, fighting, flighting, running, freezing, and fornicating. So the reptilian part of you regulates fighting, flighting, freezing, and the drive to procreate. There is a very distinct level of function in that system in which the first thing all reptiles do is make sure their territory is safe. So am I safe? Do I have enough money to pay my bills? Second, they go hunting for food. Only when their territory is safe and they have food do they initiate procreation because to procreate without safety and food would be to terminate the evolution of species. So those reptilian drives are actually in us and paradoxically most people today live against those reptilian drives. They fornicate when they're not safe, make babies when they're not safe, and when they don't have adequate food to feed themselves, or they're feeding themselves such poor food that their babies are going to get the same thing. So you can see that we're working against the principles of nature, all of which causes stress, which elevates stress hormones, glucocorticoids, and leads to imbalances that leave us highly catabolic, tissue destructive, and lack anabolic power. Yet this system is designed, paradoxically, to ensure we have anabolic abilities, that we can repair and regenerate and perpetuate our own species. But what we see is that we're working against these things, and the reptilian brain system is largely what is your autonomic system. The reptilian brain is what controls all the things that you don't think about, but have to happen to keep you alive. So whenever you're under stress, these systems are largely affected by it. So when we look at what some of these systems are, breathing, temperature regulation, circulation, digestion and elimination, immune function, vision, biochemistry, hormonal function, and the balance of hormones. If you're, there's tons of research on Tai Chi and Qigong. There's probably over a thousand research papers looking, for example, at the effects on the hormonal system. And in many cases, they show that Tai Chi and Qigong and these what I'm calling working exercises are not only more effective than drug approaches and, and synthetic hormone approaches, but they have long-term beneficial effects, unlike those other uh, agents that require uh, that you be chained to a doctor's office and prescription uh, synthetics and all that kind of garbage. So pumping, breathing is pumping. So if your pumping system's not working, your breathing system's not working, and your breathing always mirrors your mind. Pumping adjusts temperature regulation. Pumping aids circulation. Pumping aids digestion elimination. Pumping aids delivery of immune antibodies and removal of immune waste from the body. In other words, whatever's been phagocytized. Pumping aids vision because it aids the harmony of all the systems, and the visual system is extremely energy demanding. So for example, if someone has a digestive disorder, it's often that you see that they have a visual challenge with their digestive disorder. 
Pumping aids biochemistry because all your biochemistry floats around in fluids, and if you're stagnant, then your biochemistry becomes stagnant. And your hormonal system responds to pumping because anytime you pump the body and improve the harmony of the body, then your hormonal profile uh, res uh, reflects that balance, which creates a sense of harmony and balance and joy as opposed to a sense of stress. So that's how we deal with the autonomic and the reptilian centers. Now the mammalian center, which we have in the mammalian class of animals, is the limbic emotional center. It's the feeling self. The mammalian creatures have more capacity for emotion, for feeling, and they're more invested in relationships. A hungry female alligator will eat her own children because she does not have a sense of connection to them. She does not have a limbic system. Therefore, once those alligators hatch, out of their eggs, the, the mother, if she's hungry and can't find food, she just eats her own children. But in the mammalian class, as you rise up, you see that the animals will begin to sacrifice themselves for their young as you climb up in the complexity of the mammalian system. So you see there's more relatedness, more we-ness. So this is part of our feeling self. It's regulating the flow of our emotions. It's the integration of the reptilian and the neocortical brain. So this mammalian center is regulating autonomic with intellectual or psychological or, or self-perceptual function to give you the experience of your thoughts and trigger the physiological reaction to match the psychological interpretation. And then um, the limbic system is very important for facilitating imagination and intuition because you have to be able to feel your thoughts in the limbic system enhances your feeling nature. So pumping aids the limbic system because the limbic system is a system that is built upon, just like a tree grows up from a sprout to a sapling to a progressively bigger tree and gets more and more rings. This is the sapling, this is the next phase of the tree, and this is the tree that has flowered and fruited. Okay, So we have all of these systems supporting each other, and anytime you're supporting this system, you're supporting that system, that system integrates this system and that system together. If you screw that one up, you screw them all up. If you screw up here, it mirrors your screw-ups in your body. <laughs> no one to blame but you. Okay, uh, Ignorance is not bliss. Now, when we come up to the neocortical, section of the brain. This is the large section of the brain that processes novel thought, creative ideas, solving problems, and moving beyond the confines of the body. In other words, somebody who's starving to death in a concentration camp with a neocortex will have the capacity to think, how can I get out of this place, where an animal will only try within limited context, but they can't think outside of the box. So if a, if a dog can't find a hole in a fence, that's, that's it. But a human being might make a tool out of something available and pick a lock or do something novel. That comes from this part of the brain. So this is the part of the brain that has thinking of novel ideas, symbolic interpretation, archetypes are processed at this level, Spiritual development is largely governed by this section and witnessing. So this is the part of the brain that allows you to witness yourself. You can get self-reference from this part of the brain. Animals down here, for example, typically if they look in the mirror, think it's another animal. They don't recognize themselves as themselves. But once you have a neocortex and you have more, shall we say, complex circuitry, if you look at yourself in the mirror, you go, oh, that's me. So this is sort of the self-referencing ability. Now, there's some challenges up here, and this is largely why I have to do all these blogs, uh, or I choose to do them to share with you. This part of the brain, the neocortex, can also ignore the reptilian and mammalian system. So, like I said earlier, people get so involved in surfing the internet, they forget to eat, forget to go to the toilet, and they do that regularly, and it actually entrains their physiology to work incorrectly, then they're stuck and they need the help of a therapist, but usually they get drugs instead. So if your programming is faulty and you don't understand how your body works, then you actually can have behaviors that completely disrupt 
and go against the natural system that Mother Nature built to keep you alive, to give you maximum opportunity to experience joy every day instead of self-torture. So with those things in mind then, that should give you a basic overview of why it's so important to have adequate yin energy to balance your fire, why you should come into relationship with your body where working out is an externalization of self and usually outward focus, working out, working in is inward focusing and internalization of the consciousness in the body to develop an intimate relationship with yourself so you can understand and know yourself and as Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true or thou canst be true to any other man. This is very profound stuff. This is not just a line out of a play. That's deep, deep truth. Okay? So the tips for working in, now I show several techniques in my Eat, Move, and Be Healthy book. When you come to HLC1 and HLC2 and HLC3, I progressively teach you more techniques, more complex techniques, how to use them for analysis of energy centers, movement, and many other things. This is just a basic introduction. So work in exercises, there's no excuse not to do them because they actually add energy. You feel better if you're tired. You feel better if you're feeling lousy. Anyone can do work in exercise. If you can wiggle your finger, you can do it. Just time your breathing to your wiggle. That would be what I would do for someone, for example, who was paralyzed and only could wiggle a finger. Key thing is, your breathing rate should never speed up. If your breathing rate starts to speed up, you're working out. Working in happens at a level below sympathetic excitation. So if you start lifting weights, you produce metabolic waste, the acid triggers a reflex in the sympathetic system which sends blood flow which requires that the heart speed up. When you're working in, you don't want to be producing lactic acid or large amounts of metabolic waste. So you can tell if you're working too hard because your breathing starts to speed up. Most people have a hard time paradoxically working in that easily because they're so addicted to pushing things all the time. Next, your heart rate should not speed up. Your digestion should be aided. I teach beginners to do work and exercises after a meal. If you work out after a meal, it makes you feel uncomfortable. When you're working in, it aids digestion. Therefore, anyone with digestive trouble, which is almost everyone, should be working in as a component of their digestive healing. Next, when the sympathetic system turns on, the moisture of the body tends to go out of the visceral system and into the musculoskeletal system to aid readiness. The tongue is part of the visceral system. So as you're working in, if you're getting too aggressive with your movements, you'll notice your tongue will start to dry out. That tongue needs to stay moist. If you're working in, heart rate's not rising up, breathing rate's not speeding up, digestion is facilitated, and your tongue stays dry, you're probably dehydrated. Two, like I said, there's lots of techniques in Eat, Move, and Be Healthy. So there's a lot of ways you can do these things, and I give you specific instructions on which ones to use for specific challenges. Working again aids autonomic functioning, such as breathing and relaxing. So most people on this planet have poor breathing patterns. I've assessed thousands of elite athletes, and you'd be surprised hardly any of them can breathe properly. And many of them are taught to breathe incorrectly. Most people in gyms breathe completely backwards based on the science of breathing and movement. There's a DVD through the Czech Institute called Heavy Breathing by Dan Hellman who gave a presentation for the Institute based on my teachings. And it might be very, very important for all of you that exercise to study that DVD because it shows you how to breathe and move properly so you don't create unwanted stress and joint dysfunction. Finally, it's free form. Working in as I teach it. Unlike going to a Tai Chi master where you have to remember very specific steps in sequences which becomes highly intellectual. Most people today don't have the brain power to handle another 13 step program and all that stuff to remember. So my philosophy of working in is that it should be fun, relaxing, and simple. So all you've got to do is remember the key criteria and then do whatever. If you like to deadlift, then do deadlifting movements within the range of those criteria. If you like 
bench pressing, then do work in bench pressing movements. If you like, whatever it is, as long as it fits those criteria, it's working in. It does not have to be Tai Chi, Qigong, or some specific form taught to you by somebody else. It can be as simple as walking very slowly and just timing your breathing to your steps. Nothing else to it. Most people think that nothing's happening, so they're, they don't engage, but they don't realize that uh, nothing is the perfect balance for too much of something, okay? So those are my key tips on working in. This is very, very, very important stuff in our culture, and in order to really achieve your potential as a human being, you have to learn to balance your outward going ego self with your inner self so that you really understand who you are and why you're doing the things you're doing and what it takes to be a healthy person in body, mind, and spirit. I look forward to sharing more with you in our next section on working out. Thanks for joining me.